Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and talk. <coughs> welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. Today we have a most interesting subject. I have been accused over the years of having, to, having a delicate hand in the formation of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs back in 1978. And so today was our opportunity to see how well that agency's doing. And what I, what I found is that it is a moment of renewal, that we got a couple of new trustees for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, and I thought it would be really fun to get them on this show and talk a little bit about who they are and what their hopes might be for, the na for Native Hawaiians and for our state in general. So please help me welcome Kale Akaka, who is the trustee for oh, um, Oahu. Yes. The Oahu trustee for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs and Brandon. Brandon Lee is at large, the trustee at large. And both of you had exciting elections. Uh, that? That's putting it mildly. Like, <laughs> like saying you had a subtle hand is putting it mildly. <laughs> well, yeah, we're trying to be subtle. <laughs> anyway, it was exciting. It was exciting, and it's so good to welcome uh, new people. Um, you've been on the show before. I've been on before. Uh, because of your many activities with Native Hawaiians. But uh, Kale, this is your first time, so we thought we'd uh, start with you. You you now work at uh, Kamehameha Schools. I, I work understand. at Kamehameha Schools. Soon to be working for Office of Hawaiian Affairs as a trustee. That's correct. And um, was this your your first uh, election, or you, you you ran for office before? I did. I ran a uh, first time was in 2012 in Kona for the state house. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. it was a difference of 45 votes between myself and the person that moved ahead. Oh my goodness. I know. 45 votes? 45 different? votes, the slimmest margin in all the You state. should go and meet my friend Tommy Waters. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm she, fully aware. Yeah, it was like 44 yeah. and, and 22. So you understand what yes. that's like. Yes, yes. Oh, terrific. But tell me, um, now that you are in the, uh, you've been elected, mm -hmm. You have a very famous grandfather. I do. Yeah? Uh, Senator Kaka mm -hmm. is your grandfather. Mm -hmm. And I had the privilege of knowing him many years of my life. We have much to mahalo you for, for having appointed him. Oh, yeah. Yes. I had a slight hand in doing <laughs> a slight, something. A slight Again, hand. with a slight a hand. Sl <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brandon, tell us what you've done with uh, Native Hawaiians all over the state. I, I know this, uh, for those of you who have watched this show before, you have already met Brandon, but let's uh, regurgitate it. Regurgitate it again. Um, well, I am born and raised in the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs. I'm the son of two former presidents of the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs. Um, I'm the outgoing second vice president for the association. I'm also the president of the Kamehameha Schools Alumni Association. And the reason you had me on the show before with Nalehu Anthony was I was the elected chair for the AHA 2016. So both of you have been involved, at least uh, with Hawaiian uh, activities. Yeah. I think it's safe to say we both grew up in this <laughs> and continue <laughs> yeah. to work you grew, in this. You grew right. up. <laughs> you, grew, and you had no choice. And as you remember, Gov, my grandmother, right, Mary um, Vahine Okalanili, who was the oh, founding yes. member of Protoko Olave. So. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, you guys are just like my son. Yeah. yeah, you had no choice. Well, I shouldn't say. We it. have a choice. You had a choice. But we choose to. He had no this. choice. Wow. Legacy. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, Grandma didn't have a choice. Like, <laughs> yeah. You coming with us? And yeah. You're gonna go. Do you're gonna this. go walk. You're, you're gonna, gonna go, go march. Do what's you're, you're gonna, gonna go, go march. Down, and you you know, want breakfast? You coming? <laughs> you know how many young people today that are taking leadership ha mm -hmm. have similar experiences? You know, mm -hmm. uh, you you had memories of you. I'm sure you've seen your grandfather in action in the oh, United yes. States Congress. What oh, is yes. that like? Tell us a little bit about that. I've had the great fortune of growing up in this family and spending my summers alongside of him in Washington, D.C. It's been so inspiring from, from baby time, right. seeing that his, um, his ability to reach across the aisle, to get things done behind the scenes, in public. It's just, um, but where he does it in 
with the Aloha spirit. And mm -hmm. that's, I think that's one of the things that people think fondly of him, that his, him being an Aloha statesman. Right. And so a lot of what we've been doing, I think, is in working to continue that legacy of service, to, doing, to putting people first, right. and doing things with the people in mind. Well, fantastic. And your, your mom's <laughs> special. Your mom's special. You know, she's been, uh, I have been able to relate to her, work with her on, on many issues. So tell oh, us what it was like. you're better than me. <laughs> <laughs> so th now you just did. You just told us what you did. Tell us what it was like growing up in oh. a house that was really built around Hawaiian Civic Club. It was. You know, both my parents were um, founding members of Pearl Harbor Hawaiian Civic Club. In fact, my mom is the last surviving um, founder of Pearl Harbor Hawaiian Civic Club. But, you know, growing up in that household, you know, my dad used to tell us all the time, well, what are you going to do about it? And if the answer was like, well, nothing, well, then I don't want to hear about it. Right. So if you're not willing to do something about it, then I don't want to hear about it. And I didn't really start living that way until I got into high school. And issues, you know, that was the, that was the mid to late 80s, right, at Kamehameha. Right, right. And we all remember what that are, was. Are, are both of you Kamehameha alumni? I went to Konawaina. Oh, uh, but she's from Hawaii Island. Right, yes. Hawaii Island. Born and raised there, but also raised here. I even went to Maemae at one point, but I work at Kamehameha School. So, in fact, uh, one of the leaves that they gave me uh, a couple of Fridays ago, was the Kamehameha Lei. I felt like I graduated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you actually graduated from Kamehameha. I went to Kamehameha. Um, I was 13 years senior, so I was a lifer. Um, but yeah, I went to Kamehameha. So you knew my aunt, Esther McClellan? I knew her very well. Mm, was she as tough <laughs> as people say she was? Yes, very much so. <laughs> very much so. Yeah, I, I stayed with her. She was a lovely lady. Too. But I was very much um, a a uh, troublemaker up there because I grew up in a household that taught me to stand up for what I thought was right and what um, I believed in. And at that time, I'm, I'm happy to say that Kamehameha isn't like that anymore. But the Kamehameha that I went to was you sit down, you be quiet, you're lucky to be here. You don't complain. Right. And I wasn't raised that way. So I complained a lot. Well, now you got a chance to do that in public. <laughs> I was very public about it then. And when I was sent to the office and they said, well, we're going to call your parents. And I was like, okay, Benson and Tony Lee. And the response was, oh, those are your parents. Yeah. You, would you like their number? No, they're going to come up here and argue with you yeah. also, right? <laughs> That's great. That's really great. What are you guys um, doing uh, for the uh, there's an anniversary coming up? Soon, I think. For civic clubs? Yeah. Um, the Honolulu Hawaiian Civic Club, which is the mother club. So that's the club that Prince Jonah Kuhio Kalanen Ole founded. Um, they oh, turned, 100 years ago. They turned 100, 100 years on, I believe, December 7th, I think. Or no, sorry, December 16th is their 100th anniversary. And then the association wasn't founded until 1959. But Prince Kuhio founded that club so that Native Hawaiians would, become, would get civically mm -hmm. engaged and start to learn the Western process, because if, if this is the process that we have to live under, then we need to learn it well so that we can beat mm -hmm. them at their own game. So both of you are now with the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, right? Have you, either of you or both of you, have you had a chance to go down there and get, ori have they done any kind of orientation with you? Not yet, they will. Um, really? The week of um, the it's investiture, the yeah, the week of the 10th, they, they're putting together uh, an orientation for us. Uh, my understanding is the first time they're doing that. Yeah, I would, I'm, they've talked about it a right. lot, but I have never, I, that's why I asked the question. They're actually doing it this time. They're mm -hmm. actually doing it, yeah. but that's you, the, you know, the class of two, right? Uh, well, <laughs> not necessarily. So mm. they said that the, the two reelected trustees are invited to come. I made the suggestion to general counsel um, that part of that training be about Robert's Rules of Order and Parliamentary Procedure, and that they make it mandatory for every trustee to attend. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. well, that's a good idea. Especially since that's the rules that, in which we operate on that table. So, so you, is it Robert's Rules? It's or, Robert's or, Rules. Or, no. I know there's this, the different set of rules that right. the legislature The legislature follows. uses Mason's Rules, um, which is very leadership biased, right? Which is why the Speaker of the House and the President Pro Tem have so much authority and so much power. OHA operates under the Roberts Rules of Order, which gives the body the power, not the chair. Hmm, see, he's a parliamentarian. Maybe he's uh, the master of that. Well, that's good. <laughs> OHA needs a parliamentarian. And um, 
By the way, I, I think that uh, Trustee Ahuna would probably agree with that. He's, he likes studying the Roberts rules, and Trustee Wahey might do it. I don't know. <laughs> But they all should go to orientation. It would all be good. Well, at the very least, if they're going to have a class on parliamentary procedure and Robert's Rules of Order, I think that every trustee should be required to attend. If that's the rules on which we operate when we're sitting at that table to make decisions, then everyone should be proficient mm -hmm. in it. Yeah, I agree. You agree with that? I 100% I agree. Well, you learned something. You got two votes. <laughs> <laughs> you got two votes out of nine right now. You just need uh, three more, and you can insist on it. Do something like uh, you know you don't get your um, don't get your bonus or something. If you don't, uh, you <laughs> we know. get bonuses. God, you know something I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's I don't nice know. to me too. No, I never knew that they had a bonus, but um, who knows? <laughs> anyway, well, guys. since you had that slight hand, I would hope you would know. <laughs> I, I don't. That's why you guys are on my on my show today <laughs> to tell me what's happening at OHA. Okay, so. You, you get sworn in December mm -hmm. 10th. December 10th. We have our investiture December 11th. Next okay. Day. And where would it be held? At the OHA offices. We, that's no, the no, oath no, of office. The investiture? Inve yeah, oh, the investiture. Washington Place. Oh, your really? own house. Yeah, my own mm -hmm. house. Like my, 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 my hood. Yes. In the, in the hood. In your hood. <laughs> Great. So um, when do you guys, when is your first like official meeting? I the mean, when December do you 10th. decide? Uh, December 10th. December 10th. And then you're going to also deal with things like leadership and, mm -hmm. and the rest away. of it. As soon as we're sworn in. So you guys must be getting lobbied a lot right now, one way or the other, or have you? Or maybe not. I don't know. No I, I know that. Uh, no comment. Wait, wait, wait till I ask the question so we can <laughs> sex this up a little. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, it, it's like, it's like, um, I know at the legislature that the day, mm -hmm. you, actually even a little bit before, if you, they think that you're going to win. It, it seems almost historically they, the House got it together like that. Well, this, no, this you know, it's one. been times when it they was... didn't. They, I've been with the, uh, when we actually, when the House would come into session, I think it was back when uh, Jimmy Wakatsuki was chairman and, or some of those guys, or our uh, speaker. When the house would come into a session and then recess because they didn't, they weren't organized. Mm. So they did, and this went on for like two or three weeks. So it's possible. I've seen OHA go through the same thing too. Mm -hmm. And uh, but for them, they usually start, you know, jockeying very quickly. I, I'm not, I don't know what the custom is with Office of Hawaiian Affairs, but I am sure that this issue is going to come up. It's going to be the first issue that you. You face actually. Probably. Well, that's actually the very first decision we have to make. That's why the, um, the board, um, the board meeting is called as soon as we are all sworn in, for us to elect um, to reorg the board. That's so good. The, elect that's a new good. chair, new committee chairs, vice chair, committee vice chairs. Yeah. Well, uh, since you, you got the floor, what what's your hopes and dreams for OHA? Well, I have big hopes and dreams, Gov, because I remember when you guys did this work in 78, you know? Um, I remember my dad explaining to me what this meant, you know, and what the possibilities finally were for Hawaiians. So that's my hopes and dreams, you know, that OHA finally is able to fulfill what its mission is, which is to better the living conditions of Native Hawaiians and not fight among each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a... The hard thing is people think that... How do you define what better living conditions is? Right? Right. Is it housing? Is it education? Is it economic sustainability? What is it? Well, yeah. So that's what the trustees should be discussing, not whether or not I should sue you over something or if X beneficiary should get something and Y beneficiary should not get something. That's, that's not what it should be about. OK, well, are we going to take a small break in, in a minute? So when we come back, We'll ask uh, <laughs> Kale whether or trustee, the new Oahu trustee, what her, what her hopes and dreams might be for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. So we'll be right back, folks. Thank you. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you 
tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahe'e and our guest, the Oahu trustee for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, Kale Akaka, and the at-large trustee, Brandon Lee. And we're having a most interesting conversation. There are two new trustees for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. By the way, folks, if you have any questions, feel free to call us at 808 374 2014, 808 So we were just talking to Brandon mm -hmm. about his hopes and dreams for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. And what, uh, what would you like to contribute with the, uh, to the vision? Well, I, to continue his message here, I think it's really important for our people to be able to come together, to work together where we're talking with each other versus at each other in the most respectful and aloha way possible to really get things done. So part of my goals and how my vision for doing this is in through working partnerships. So that's on the city level, that's on the state level, that's on the federal government level, and also with, with um, organizations with the same concerns and the same goals. So we all pretty much want the same thing. We want betterment for our Native Hawaiian people. But there's ways in doing that where we can rise our people up and the, the community as a whole rises up together. But I'm really looking forward and pumped to put my experience and my relationships to work, having worked at the legislature, having grown up calling many well, what people you like for? you, uh, yeah. uncle. <laughs> uncle for yes. many years. Yes. <laughs> Maybe you'll get a payoff, though. <laughs> <laughs> the benefit the is benefit. to help the people. <laughs> right. But who, you mentioned working at the legislature. Mm -hmm. Who did you work for? So I started working for Maui Rep Gil Keith Agran. Oh, OK. So okay. yes. So I worked He's in the, the house He's the judiciary side. chairman now, right? Or mm -hmm. something like that. So you can squeeze in for a better definition of what ceded lands consist of. Yes, so working with him, and then I, then I moved over to the Senate side, and I worked for Senator Brian Taniguchi. So I did committee work in higher education, judiciary. I asked you operations. a question. OK, so you okay. work for the guy that ran the higher education right. committee, mm -hmm. OK? University of Hawaii sits on ceded lands. Do you just, you know, like a gut thing, do you believe that that ought to translate into at least some kind of tuition support for Native Hawaiian students? Well, I think that's worth talking about. I'm actually interested to hear what your ideas, your mana'o would be on that. Well, actually, there was I'm a... all about options and good opportunities. Yeah, because it seems to me like there needs to be some offset. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, Na'aleu's mom, right, mm -hmm. uh, Auntie Lily Kala, did that, uh, raised that issue on a mm. number of occasions. Right, mm -hmm. and she brought it to the civic clubs, and we pushed, I think, four or five resolutions through over the last 20 years, um, asking the, um, the legislature and UH to waive all tuition for Native Hawaiians, because in lieu of the fact that they're not giving us our 20% parada that they're supposed to be giving us, that all Native sure. Hawaiians who attend the UH system attend tuition free. You know, they've been getting away with it too long. I mean, because uh, you, you mentioned the the 20%, right? Mm -hmm. the, 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 there's a, a requirement by the Hawaii State Constitution that 20% of the revenues generated from what we know as ceded lands or called ceded lands should go to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. And it's uh, almost uh, a dereliction of, of, of 
duty, I think, mm -hmm. not well, to have resolved that question with OHA. Except for the four words that you guys put in. Which in is? As provided by law. Yeah, but, uh, but there's still the mandate. There There's is. still the mandate, and it says as provided by law. Mm -hmm. And I remember we dealt with a similar issue with a, a Native American tribe in New York. And at some point, and, uh, the, the, the court said mm -hmm. that delay, you know, not doing, not providing right. by law, becomes a violation of due process. Do you think that we can ever get to that point in Hawaii where the, where the court would say, or, or, or people would say to the legislature, enough is enough, you can't keep passing the ball? I think so. And I think the legislature responds well to public interest, public outcry for the need, the importance of that. So I think there needs to be some gentle reminders to the legislature. But it also takes the work of the Board of Trustees, the CEO, the administration to, to support this vision and to have the one-on-one -on -one relationships at the legislature. So both of you uh, believe that you can, you might, we might be able to work things out? Absolutely. Or do we need give another? Time, give me a time frame, Gulf. <laughs> what, two years? No. No? No, it's, as long as that's in there and well, given the current um, federal court status that we have now. I mean, look what just happened in Alaska, um, in Arizona, when they used Rice via Cayetano to take away adoption rights from Native Americans. Right. No, in the next two years, that's not going to happen. It's, so it's you, the, you, I'm hopeful. the reality. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. We clearly need to have more presence at the legislature. We need to have more presence at the governor's office. We need to be more present. Do you guys think that we, we need another 10,000 pe people march? Well, that was fun. I, I, I know you guys walked in. I walked in. Eh? I remember that. Did you, you guys, you remember I everybody remember. walked down through Waikiki? It was over 10,000 people. What a fantastic day that was. I mean, there's different ways of showing interest, showing up to hearings, calling for a hearing, putting testimonial forward, calling your senators, calling your representatives, being present, really just being present and showing this matters to me and this is why. Well, it's going to be important. Um, it is important. If you believe in the betterment of, uh, of our people, then in order one of the things you need is resources. In order to meet the task at hand, we need proper funding, bottom yeah. line. And well, we're not going to get the proper funding without the 20%, right? Yeah. So if, if Native Hawaiians really want to push that 20% issue for the PLT, then what they really need to be lobbying for is the Sunshine Law. You know, the legislatures get to get things done because what did they do as soon as you guys wrote Sunshine Law into the Constitution was they went and wrote a law that waived them of the Sunshine Law. Right. But yet the Office of Hawaiian Affairs mm -hmm. is still stuck with the Sunshine Law. We cannot have meetings behind closed doors to discuss things without the general public there weighing in on what we're talking about. What? We all, well, hang on, Gov. We also cannot go to the legislature and have those closed door meetings with the legislatures because of Sunshine Law. Uh, is there is there a uh, actual ruling from somebody that says that the legislation the, the that the legislature should be setting the set, the standards the ethical and sunshine standards for the office of Hawaiian Affairs? The reason why I bring this up because we were talking about my sleight of hand involvement <laughs> was that the um, back in the day. What what the purpose of one of the pur purposes of creating the office was to have an agency whose uh, whose focus was on on uh, advocating for Native Hawaiians. Right. Now people believe people have since that time taken that to mean that because this is a state agency, that somehow it's under the executive branch. It's under the executive branch. And so anything that applies to all the other agencies applies to OHA. That's not necessarily true. Except the court ruled that. Well, yeah, when? Uh, you know, I, I, mean, I know what you're saying, but they never really dealt with these issues. But the reason why I bring this up is the city and county, for example, right. has their own standards. Mm -hmm. Now, they, unfortunately, they are specifically put under the you know, Information Act. Um, I was going to say, council, um, even neighborhood boards operate under Sunshine Oh, yeah, all, they all do, uh, because they're all part of the executive branches. 
But I don't think anybody has actually challenged, and I've had this conversation with Professor mm -hmm. McKenzie, I don't think anybody has actually challenged that, whether OHA is an executive agency or not. We, we just presume it. But that may be for another time. Um, but that's just something to think about. Oh, some, definitely something to look into then, if that's right. the case. Uh, uh, yeah. Unless we can have conversations behind closed doors with legislatures, and the general public out there might can say what they want about hiding and doing all of this. Nothing's going to get done. That well, we're, the we're not going to be able to solve though, this twenty percent issue. Even even if you do have these meetings, the, the one of the one, the other problem, it might be actually the bigger problem, is the fact that you you uh, when you talk about civility and working mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. you can't actually meet mm -hmm. and do that. Not with more than two of us. Yeah, and so if you actually you know had a situation where which got tight, I mean I. I I've been in situations where we close the door and said, you know, you five legislators go in there and don't come out till you have a solution. Mm -hmm. and, but now, you know, the first thing that would happen is my dear friend Richard Barreca would be pounding <laughs> on the door, you know, like, let me in, let me in. And so you'd never get resolution. Mm -hmm. And almost every vote is 5-4, right? Yeah. So what do you do? You know, you, 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 you can't, you can't, you can't, uh, sometimes you... you well, I'm sure that you younger, smarter people will figure out all of these problems. <laughs> but, it's about finding balance. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, talk about partnerships. Yes. Okay? One of the other obvious institutions is Hawaiian Homes. Mm -hmm. And uh, developing a partnership, it right. seems to me, with Hawaiian Homes mm -hmm. would be kind of high on the agenda. Absolutely. What? Oh, we're running out of time, so let me give you a real quick another thing. You know, there's one perfect thing, and I, I haven't even talked to Trustee Wahe about this yet, but or at all, mm -hmm. but is the fact that there are 30 homes sitting vacant on, um, uh, on Papa Kulea, and they're being, they're being used by really unsavory elements, I mean, with drug use and all of that, and what they lack is uh, renovation. Mm. So, not, you don't need to answer, but uh, go check it out. Well, have you spoken to DHHL about this? No, but I've spoken to Joe uh, Cujillo Lewis, who told me this. CNHA. From CNHA. And, and, yeah, and he just told me, and he's looking for a partnership. So it might be a way to, to do something. Well, OHA funds up to $3 million annually. And I think with everything, we can always do more. So it's about being able to lift each other up and work together to do, there's so much potential. It's there's your Auntie so Lynn potential. calling. Oh, <laughs> please give her my aloha. <laughs> thank you. There's so much potential, as you say, and I hate to cut it off, but I want to thank you both. Thank you. It's been a very interesting uh, uh, time that we've had, and good luck. And I know, as uh, fellow Native Hawaiians, that we actually count on you to do what is needed for all of us and for the entire state of Hawaii. So Thanks, Aloha. Girl. Thank Aloha. you. We'll continue the conversation. Mahalo. Mahalo. <laughs>